It's Thursday, it's four o'clock, and you're watching Chelsea and Tony live. And today, our theme for photos is reflections. So if you have not submitted those yet, you can do that now at sdp.io slash submit. And we're gonna be talking about some exciting photo news, including a new Canon lens, a new absurdly priced Nikon lens, um, an action cam, okay, and some other interesting things. But first, Tony, do you want to talk about our sponsor, Squarespace? <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Squarespace, and I don't actually know how to fully deliver <laughs> the sponsorship. <laughs> Whether so. you need a website or domain, if you want to sell something or just show off your photos, you can get a Squarespace website. It's super easy, guys. Tony, you know how you do a Squarespace plug? You speak from the heart. Is it easy? Yes. <laughs> how many of them do you have, Tony? Three. That's a little absurd, but clearly you like it because <laughs> you do. paid for two of those yourself. And if you can just try it for free for 14 days, go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. It's a good old time. Yeah. And I'm going to look at a portfolio at some point in the live show, like in the middle. So go to sdp.io slash link and send in the link to your portfolio because we need some submissions. So Poo. we'll actually review your portfolio. And next week we're reviewing your autumn photos. So photos with a fall theme, because like, that's what it's like, at least here in New England. Give us an autumn vibe. Fake it if you want. Yeah. Just hug a pumpkin. We don't care. You think I care? While you're sending your pictures in, let's go over this week's news. There was actually like a whole lot as people start to ramp up for the Christmas season. Remember the Sigma FP? Yeah. This was... They announced it previously. It was a the oh, yeah. smallest full frame camera ever, 24 megapixels. It had the not super popular L mount, no electronic viewfinder, no mechanical shutter, contrast AF only, and 4K 30. We didn't know the price though. And I remember saying, if they can come in at $900, this is going to be a hit because it'll it's like very limited in features, but it's full frame and a lot of people just want that full frame. So maybe this can be the least expensive full frame camera ever. I was gonna guess the price, but now I feel like you're setting it up for a disappointingly high price. $1,900. So it's about the price of like a Sony a7 III, which has, you know, phased attack and a wide variety of lenses. And I was just really disappointed in the price. I thought this was a really good opportunity to finally give yeah. people that low cost full frame camera they've been looking for. I like where they're going with it. Right. I like that you stripped it down, Sigma. I think here you have a good idea going. Let's get it down to less money. <laughs> you know the price every single person tells me. I just got another text from a friend last night. We want a camera. What's your budget? $500 every single person. You could be a billionaire. You could be so poor you can't afford dinner. Every person says $500. I don't know why. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Maybe you guys have insight. That's the price of cameras, apparently. I think everybody's first one is. Like, if you go into Best Buy, that's the cameras that they kind of have assorted as the $500 price range. That's exactly how much I paid for my first one. Eggs, 500 I, I think probably me too, yeah. Um, Ow. This camera is so bizarre. The Canon Ivy Rec. What's it mean? I don't know what the name means, Ooh, but it like comes in multiple colors. <laughs> okay. It's... Like Canon saw that GoPro was on the verge of bankruptcy and they saw Nikon's key mission action cameras that failed and ended up getting discontinued. So Canon's like, we want a piece of that. <laughs> and they made this action camera. It's, it's HD only, like no 4K, no display. You're supposed to look through the carabiner hook as your viewfinder. I don't know how you know how close or far you're supposed to hold it. Okay. And then you can use like a micro SD card to transfer the, who wants this as opposed to just using your smartphone? Like it is far inferior video to your smartphone, <laughs> but you can clip it onto a bag or something. And you have no idea what you're filming because it has no screen. This seems like a little fun perv cam. <laughs> oh, what? Like you'd like. Yeah, if you're a perv on the move, mm. you like bright colors, 
You want to just clip it to something. Okay. I, I had not come up with a single use for it, but that's why you're here. You think mm-hmm. it differently. The Canon Perv Cam. This seems, oh, no. <laughs> this seems absurd to me. Uh, I, especially because you can now get a $40 action camera that has a screen and 4K. It's $40. And a man busting out of the back of it dramatically. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with camera companies lately. Like, the industry is in a nosedive and so it's exciting to see what they'll come up with to try to save the business and then they come up with these bizarre things like anyway canon also released or they're releasing three new lenses this is their like holy trinity of f28 lenses the 15 to 35 the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200 these are for their rf series of cameras which i'm genuinely excited about because the rf lenses we've tried have been amazing we're just kind of waiting for that like pro rf body to come out but for the first time, we see the 70 to 200 oh. in action. <clears throat> Isn't it so adorable? It's like a sh- it's about half the size of other 70 to 200 F2.8s. It is the RF mount. I was concerned that it was for a different mount because I wanted to try this adorable creation. Yeah. This is way better than the perv cam. I, I give totally this two agree. thumbs up. I genuinely, when I saw this, I thought this would be so useful. Like as a portrait photographer, as a wedding photographer, you kind of live and die with that 7200 after mm-hmm. it, but it gets so heavy at the end of a wedding. So yeah. to have it be that much smaller, to just be able to put it in your bag and not have to debate whether you bring it or not. Absolutely. Um, it's a controversial choice though, because it is extending as you zoom and pro photographers don't like that. It tends to suck in more dust. So I don't know. It's the kind of thing that we'll have to test, but I think that might be a compromise I'm willing to make to have it be that much smaller in my bag. We'll see. That's cool. Nikon also released their Z mount uh, lens plan. These are the lenses that are going to be announced. So in addition to the lenses we already have, we're going to see a 50 millimeter F 1.2, which is interesting. I guess they decided to try to match the Canon 50 F 1.2. Okay. They're going to have a 20 F 1.8, uh, compact 28 and 40 millimeter lenses like those are pancake lenses um a 60 and 105 macro lens for close-up work what does the yellow dot mean the yellow ones are the coming soon lenses the Uh, blue ones are the lenses that already exist they're going to fill out their holy trinity with a 14 and 24 and 70 200 f2.8 we tested the 24 to 70 f2.8 and it was like the best it was absolutely great they're also going to have a 24 to 105 uh, probably a four, which is a good like general purpose lens, uh, 100 to 400 and 200 to 600. So we're finally getting some telephoto zooms because they didn't have any, they, well, they have no telephoto lenses right now. Okay. And for their DX lineup, uh, they're adding a 18 to 140 as well as like a general purpose full frame 24 to 200. We are full of news. This, this one shocked me. The 58 millimeter F.95. Yeah. We heard about this like a year ago, but mm-hmm. they wouldn't tell us the price. I understand why. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I never understood this lens. Like they announced this lens with the new cameras. We were supposed to be excited about it. And I would have been, except it was a manual focus only lens. Oh, and having used like a manual focus 8514 and a manual focus 50 F095, I know it's like impossible. You never get stuff in focus. I can just feel an angry man typing right now. Real photographers don't need autofocus. Right. Okay. If you're a real photographer (laughs) and you're real rich, before I tell you the price, I'll say it has a little LCD screen on top. It has a button that you can customize, dirt and grime resistance, electromagnetic Mm -hmm. diaphragm, Mm -hmm. and many different coatings. I love coatings. It comes with its own case. Oh, dang, that case. I don't know why the case is quite that big. It's so it's big. It's actually much bigger than the lens. What but, goes in that little space? Uh, you could probably use it to just store like rolls of $100 bills. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> it's $8,000. $8,000. Wow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, that's neat. I want to try one. I have the little, I think it's Medicon or Zhang Yi, uh, 50 millimeter F095 for Sony, and it was like $800. And that seemed like a whole lot for what is essentially a fun, like non-professional lens. And But I like it. It's it's fun. That's available at the end of October, if that sounds like you. Let's look at some people's pictures. The theme today is reflections. Okay. Let's start with this cool picture of a BMW. I like that you went a little matte with it. Oh, okay. 
I was just about to <laughs> add some contrast oh, to it. I like that. You know, it's still a matte effect, but mm -hmm. with a little more contrast. So I thought this was pretty good planning. And they, they kind of positioned themselves so the puddle there would be reflecting. And puddles are a good opportunity because you can get a good reflection out of a shockingly small puddle if you get close enough. And it's an opportunity for creative composition. Yeah. Something to think about. Okay. At first, I didn't think this was too exciting, but then I noticed the reflection of the lightning and the Storm Spotter logo on the car. Yeah. And it actually did a good job he of pulling it, it all together. My call, Storm Spotting once again. I like the water tower in the back too. Yeah, it's overall a really cool shot. Good job, Mike. This is a so fun. this is something I thought might happen like sometimes the reflections are incidental to the scene not mm -hmm. necessarily here but that happens a lot um and you you guys could if you like the reflection you could accentuate that like crop out this junk up there let's kind of balance the photo around the reflection a little more we can crop there's nothing interesting going on besides a little froggy and then you know i don't know let's be creative here let's think outside the box don't be afraid to do something different. This is a zero risk situation here, <laughs> right? People are so afraid of some troll commenting, I don't like your photo. Like who cares guys, do something exciting. Okay, Chris W. Um, are those real? Yeah, I think they are. We gotta, we gotta level this, right? It seems a little mm -hmm. off. Okay, Justin says uh -huh. <laughs> and then, you know, with these wide shots, like there's a lot in here that isn't necessarily adding to the picture. I think the only part of the picture that's really interesting is sort of around this part of the skyline. Even this boat over here is cool, but at no. the same time, <gasps> you like the boat? I like the boat. Okay, I'll just, Ooh. I'll just pull it a little closer. Dang, you're going a little wild. I guess I wish the boat were, it, it should be like in or out. You know what I mean? Like it should be more prominent or completely out of the frame. It's sort of like it doesn't feel deliberate. I, I made the colors a little more crisp too, because sometimes it has that like dingy artificial lighting look. And yeah, I like it to look fresh. Like, that, like yellow green color. Mm -hmm. um, okay. This looks like it might be a reflecting pool. Uh, I haven't been to this spot. I will say a general tip on reflecting pools is to get there like super early in the morning because winds are generally lowest early in the morning and any sort of water surface is going to be much more still. I learned this in Washington, D.C., trying to get that sort of iconic shot of the Washington Monument. Uh, yeah, the Washington Monument. And every time I went, there were just ripples on the water and I couldn't get that reflection. I realized, oh, of course, I need to get up early. I, I would also say you have a nice sunset here. But the light's a little flat on the architecture. Look here. You might be better with some side lighting if that's possible. It's tough. It's a toughie. Ooh. Marshall. I like the reflections. I like all the colors. Yeah, and Marshall went for like symmetry by kind of putting that beach line right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you did a great job. Yeah, I mean, I like, you know, pick Marshall. I like that picture, Marshall. Hmm. I kind of wish we saw a little more of her non-reflected face. Yeah. Then you feel like she's, her face is just kind of oddly jutting in. Yeah. And she's her, almost photobombing her own picture. Yeah. She's a little cut off here. But I like the reflection and I like the general mood of it. Like her expression matches the sort of solemn mood. She doesn't have like a big grin on. Yeah. I, I upped the contrast because everything was a little bit washed out and she's very fair so you can drop the shadows and drop the exposure a bit good shot deborah yeah deborah light painting Ooh -hoo. someone got their feet wet for this shot where is the light painting artist how did they there not appear at all in the frame they're a ghost it's a ghost 
Good job, I like drawing. the color contrast, the blues in the background and all the bright colors in the foreground. Very interesting. Different. Yeah, we haven't talked about light painting in a long time, but check the Night Photography chapter in Stunning Digital Photography, and we have a whole section on it, all the different tools you can use to get That's cool true. effects like that. Convict Lake by Jonathan Ricasa. Ooh, I bet that lake has a fun story. Like they drown all the convicts in there. Yeah, that's fun, Charles. Yeah, I like history. Super fun. I like history for that reason. They were insensitive. <laughs> uh, I think it's a beautiful shot. I think it's made more powerful by the reflection. I think this is a good example of kind of when to use it. Two two point five seconds. So the water must have really been glassy and beautiful time of day. I'm going to give you a pick. Morning horse. Ooh, I like the reflection. Oh, can we do the thing where we flip it all the way around? How do we do that? Sometimes. So uh, I know how to do it from the grid view. Me too. Yeah. Hit those things. Bam, 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 bam. Now it's like, whoa, where <laughs> am I, Tom? Some other planet or something? <laughs> Um, I would definitely, definitely back off on the processing. You know, we have a lot of edge glow here. Uh, it just feels a little over-processed. So at least if you're sending it out to other photographers, uh, I think civilians might be a little more tolerant of sort of the this sort of HDR style processing in this extreme. I did something crazy, but Tom, like, just be there for me. Let's try something, you know? <laughs> I'm giving us a pick, Tom. That's crazy. Put that on your Facebook. Your family's going to worry about you. How cool is this? That's pretty cool, Stephen. I like you in black and white just to highlight the details. I'm going to give Stephen a pick. I like the just completely black background with absolutely no mm -hmm. distractions. Mm -hmm. in it. I, I'm kind of wondering, oh, I guess that's just Lightroom? Like, oh, no, it's... There's like a black border, like it's letterboxed. I don't know why that's there. I would just crop that out. Great, great job. Iconic. Well, oh. beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Oh, that's cool. Oh, man, that's taken with a Google Pixel. <laughs> I was like, I wonder what kind of macro lens they got for this. Very cool. I'll give you a pick. Yeah, especially if you're getting it done with a smartphone. That's a really cool shot. Three brothers. Those are mountains, Sean. Really disappointed. You had me hoping to see brothers. <laughs> uh, I would um, definitely want to see more contrast in this, right? I feel like it was taken in early morning or late dusk when there's no direct hard light. And as a result, you're getting only reflected light and everything just ends up being like very soft and even. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right about black and white. I think. Oh, really? I just went into black and white to look at the contrast sometimes um, you can see it a little better but we do have pretty colors in the sky but oh. yeah we're getting such low contrast on the ground i like it oh a little tufa mono lake what happened here oh my gosh every time someone sends in a picture of this tufa i just think of how hard i fell <laughs> <laughs> um maybe we could just crop up these two little guys yeah. Would you, I was going to say like maybe just crop in way tighter since we have like the whole bottom of the picture is like nothing basically. The, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I, yeah. I was thinking about cropping even and even from the left, but I like the sky there so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like it. I like the colors. Good job, Gary. Oh, role model mother and daughter. Her mother is reflecting back at her. I felt like this before. I like that you you made a photo into a concept and an idea. Mm -hmm. That's really creative. We don't see that very often. Um, nice. I'm going to give it a pick. I think it's a cool concept. Are you still pondering it? Yeah. Good job, Amir. Oh, tricolor heron. Yeah, I, they're so pretty. I don't think I've ever seen a reflected picture of a bird quite this sharp. You must have had just glassy water. Yeah, the reflection is like just about as sharp as the original image. It's it's gorgeous, I think. Yeah, I 
agree with lowering the exposure just a little <laughs> bit. Um, yeah, that's better. I'm going to give Jeffrey a pick. He must have been really excited to grab that shot to see that kind of unfold like that. Yeah, that's cool. I do wish they would have the decency to get like a bear fish. Yeah, try harder, sure. tricolor heron. Yeah. The Taj Mahal. Okay. It's definitely. always hazy there. Yeah, it seems like it is. And unless you're like the first person at the gate, it's going to be crowded like this. I know people line up to be the very first person there, so they don't have a ton of people there. I actually, I I think this is a nice picture, Thug Bong. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't actually think that the reflection is like an impressive part of the photo. I'm not getting much out of it. Another benefit to showing up early is that the winds would be a little lighter and therefore the reflection would be a little smoother. Um, but I really like Thug Bong's processing on it. I like the colors. What if that's just his given name and yeah. it's just like means something else in another country? The, like, yeah, very well good. Like how that. Kimmy in Korean means something naughty. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool, but I don't know that. How'd she do that? The reflection is adding much to it for me. You know, it's very dark. It's like so far away. That's interesting. She actually jumped too high, which I. Yeah, I was I'm thinking still, that too. I'm shocked. Like how? Look, she's posing right down to her elegant hand. Who is this person? Yeah, you have. Looks like a good and experienced dancer and model. I would keep shooting and maybe find a different location too, because I don't know. This one has like a lot of clutter, little grasses and stuff, and kind of random buildings that are detracting from it. Or just use a more telephoto lens and kind of zero in on the subject. But I think this is something to continue working on. It looks like they have an off camera flash there to kind of make her pop, and that would help with the reflection too, because obviously the light you bounce off of her is also going to be reflected off the water. Oh, she looks familiar. Maybe we're friends. Let's crop it down. Yeah, I agree with that. Let's just crop it all the way down. Wait, those two, I went too far. So we've kind of got two different elements here. We've got the reflection, but we've also got the Dutch tilt, which is, you know, it's like 20, 25 degree tilt on the camera, which just makes the whole shot seem a little bit more dynamic. The reflections in the glass besides the model there are pretty, like the purple color is pretty, but not too distracting. Uh, I, I think it's really nicely done. I'm pondering whether to bring up the brightness on the reflection, since especially with your processing, the reflection is now quite dark. I mean, that, that does happen with reflections. Yeah. Let's say, let's just do something a little cheap here. Yeah, I think that's better. The fact that she's interacting with it, uh, technically the photo is very good, Alan, but the fact that she's interacting with it makes it a little weird, like her twin got stuck behind that glass. <laughs> <laughs> it's not much of a reflection. Oh, God. Uh, okay, you just know I like airplanes. The one thing I would comment on is um, I w you're really close to the wing tip there and i want to crop everything except that one pilot out that's, because this that's is what i was gonna do yeah we're on a movie set like we got a big camera all these distractions but like this is the iconic shot and then i would maybe you could even do it in post but extend the canvas to the right a little bit uh maybe you have other shots where you captured like more the along the right oh and get rid of the guy under the wheel there Gosh, Google guy, ruining it. Um, and then you will have yourself an iconic shot with just a little bit more editing. Yeah, so if you captured, like if you panned around a little bit, you can maybe stitch those pictures together and mm -hmm. fill in those mountains some. They're beautiful colors, right? I'm just going to give this one a pick. It's gorgeous. Yeah, Travis, I like this a lot. I think we could employ our old um, little trick here and make it even more abstract. That's um, a little creepy, actually. I, There's something I, upsetting about that. I, I wish know. we had a little space on the left and right, because as you can see, the grasses are just touching the edge of the frame. Yeah. 
if we had a little more space. You could extend the canvas probably to fake it. I don't like what I did with it. It scares you me. You just have though. to un, you can't even just leave it like that. No, it like, ooh, it gave me a bad feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Take you back to your psychologist Rorschach I don't know. test. No, if that's a Rorschach test, that's like the scariest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. All right, let's see. Okay. We, what we just before I can even look at it. You have to level? Yeah. Is that your version of the stick thing that bothered me? Yeah, maybe so. So we had that like powerful vertical line and I'm just making sure that the marks here in the crop view line it up perfectly and hit it dead center. And now I know that we have it level. Um, this needs just a couple of touches. We need to clone out the person on the right taking the picture and then the person on the left taking the picture. The, Look at all these people taking pictures. Oh, uh, well, I couldn't see them. This is just oh, this. Wow. There's only I two that I feel like we need I to I just feel like of. this is every single beautiful place when you're a photographer. You're like, well. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at all those people. The gang's all here. Yeah. And, and clone the people out. And you will have a wonderful picture. But leave those two people to the right of the lighthouse. I'm going to give this one a pick. I also changed the colors a little bit because we had some of that, like, orangey the blue looks kind of it looks a little nasty maybe i went too far for your taste but i like to just crisp in the colors hey speaking of crispin chris reddy do you have any questions or comments from the people's watching nice segue i must say <laughs> masterful <laughs> yeah we got some good ones here uh what picture control do you guys usually set your camera to? Standard, neutral, vivid, vivid portrait, landscape, or do you bother with that? Um, sometimes I do it mono. If I if I want to shoot black and white, that helps me concentrate on the form. But usually it's just standard. Oh. Yeah, same for me. Exactly okay. the same. Sometimes I shoot black and white. But because I'm almost always shooting raw, and I'd rather just do the processing in post. I got my presets that I always use anyway, so... Makes me special. What else? Another question. As far as reflections, the best composition using water, is it best for it to be dead center in the middle or following the rule of thirds? Or does it is it completely dependent on the subject? I think it depends on the subject. Sometimes if the symmetry is that perfect, having it in the middle could be interesting. But I think it depends on the photo. As we're gonna see. We'll talk about it as we go through through some more photos. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, and is are you going to talk at all about the Z50? Do you have any? A lot oh. of people were like, "Well, we, we talked about it last week, right?" We did, and I recorded a video on it, but we because we had the live show today, we won't publish that until okay. tomorrow. So I do have an in-depth video about okay, it. Okay, we got an in-depth one. It is. Okay, we are going to take a look at a Squarespace portfolio, and we will critique it. I'm I'm thinking, Mark. Costitch. Um, I like that yours is really simple and clean. That's what catches my eye. I like that you have a really striking photo just out there. And you even say a little bit about it, which I think makes it uh, more interesting. Well, it seems like he his default page is his about page, though. Oh, I thought it's that just that was this just... one picture and then it tells me about him, but it doesn't have a picture of you. It's, it's labeled as home. Well, what's his about page then? Um, okay, well, I'm going to suggest a change, which is the purpose of this portfolio review. And I would say, start with some of your best pictures, you know, the blurb about yourself. We'll click on the about when we're ready for that. This about page is good. I like this picture of you a lot. And you have an appropriate amount of words. Oh, 10 best. I was okay. just like, wow. That sounds perfect. Wait, mm -hmm. but two of those are like exactly the same. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I want to go to one of these spots where they do that. Um, which of those pictures do you like better? The one right before it goes into the mouth. Yeah, me too. The bear is not even jealous. I respect that. Um, so I would, I think I would drop the other picture. I mean, I think it's interesting to see the sequence, but at the same time, you've just said, these are my 10 best pictures. And then the first two are almost exactly the same. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? Look at that sloth. Holy moly. I've never wanted to tickle an animal more in my life. That's so cute. These are great. I actually really like this layout. This is a different layout than I've seen from a Squarespace portfolio before, but I it feels so professional that he's got like descriptions and numbers. Mm -hmm. I love numbers. <laughs> oh, yeah. The 
The frog, these frogs are amazing. I know, that's adorable. Um, yeah, you've done a good job of conveying yourself as a professional, especially, you know, you've got like Getty uh, credentials there. Snakes, other reptiles, wow. Your pictures are beautiful. Your website is simple. I like that you don't have a distracting background. Um, I love that you have, you know, the species and a little description about the animal and then your stock number so people can go buy it through a stock website. Really? I will say the stock agency is going to take a huge chunk of the money. You've already got people on your site. Squarespace gives you a store with every site. Why not let people buy it directly from you? Like they can fulfill it and the money just ends up on your bank account and you can get, you know, a hundred percent basically instead of you, your That's portion minus the stock. True. Agency. You could keep this format the same and instead of Adobe being first, it could just be your own Squarespace where people could click through and buy the rights. Yeah, I do think it's smart to link to the agencies because people just have agencies that they work with. It's part of their workflow, but maybe give people the option to buy and who knows, maybe you'll make some extra money. This is Man, great. So you, yeah, wow. even just saying your top 10 shots leaves so many awesome shots off the oh table. Oh my God. Wow. This These work are is amazing. great, Mark. All right, Mark. I mean, your photos are great. Your layout is professional, clean, and simple. I like that every photo is separated from the last, so they're not merging together. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good template for your work. And you unified it, too. Like, these are the same size. Then you put four of the same size together. So, yeah. You do I, I don't know that Osprey pooping belongs here. <laughs> oh, it totally does. <laughs> or does it have a snake? I like how he clarifies defecating, no, defecating. Okay. pooping <laughs> while flying. And that probably doesn't need to be in the No, I, out. Tony, that's a reality, okay? <laughs> if you can't handle pooping, you can't handle Mark. Oh, man, Mark's got one of those cool planes. Dang. I want to hang out with Mark. He looks like Robert California from the late seasons of The <laughs> Office. <laughs> We've been rewatching The Office. That's why that's the second reference to The Office in this episode. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, he's barefoot hanging out with the old crocodilly. Mark, you're going to die. Mark? <laughs> what are you doing, dude? Mark, when you go out, it's going to be with a story. Ooh. And a scream, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't have any feedback other than maybe trying to just sell your own work through no, the shop. Oh, we just have a shop. Let's see your shop. I wonder if he could even put a link first. Oh, okay. So you can, you have a store set up. That's great. That's perfect. Oh That's gosh. what Squarespace is for. I would just link through on where you put them before. Eat it. I want it on a tote. I want it on a pillow. <laughs> oh. Okay. This is a good example of all the things you can do with your Squarespace Mark, store. Mark, you're selling Squarespace, guys. Oh, look I see. He linked. linked through to find art. He linked that. through, but look at how clean it is. It's simple. Professionals use it. And let's see what he has to say about it. Mark says, I truly enjoy using Squarespace. These templates are very easy to use and very easy to modify if you want to be more unique. Their customer service is outstanding and their prices are very reasonable. I use Chelsea's name to get my discount. Sorry, Tony. Dang, yeah, Mark. <laughs> wow. Well, I guess if you also hate me, yeah. You can go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and mm -hmm. get a 14-day free trial. If you love Squarespace, like Mark, use the coupon code Chelsea and you can get your tell get yourself 10% off. I just think Tony works too. If it doesn't work because I think it's interesting that I was so supportive of his adventures and you told me he was gonna die. Like very rude, very unsupportive. Mark and I know what's up. You wanna do chit chat before we look at some yeah, more pictures? I only have two chit chats because I had to I had to look through and a few just caught my eye. Okay, my, so we're looking at reflection photos, but now we're going to read some of your dumb comments from them. Yeah. Um, no, this one's just cool. Mike Nebula okay. says, classic video with so cool up-to-date knowledge. Tony, thank you so much for this awesome video. And Chelsea, girl, you made me laugh that I farted. Okay. I know a little bit too much information. Anyways, you guys rock. Mike, I just want to tell you, not even my crowning achievement. I am once made someone laugh until they peed their pants. And that's my crowning achievement. So if I get to... So far, there's still room for improvement. There's still room for one more thing. <laughs> I'm working on it. Ian Wright said, love the 80s style retro video. Try to keep up. Ian, how are you going to serve me that piping hot roasting burn with a hairdo like that, Ian? <laughs> Come at me, bro. What video was it? Was it maybe the like video game thing that I did? Or? No, it was our tripod video we just put out. 
Oh. Oh, I mean our um our wildlife video. Oh, dang. Dang, Ian. Wow. We're angry. Savage. Yeah, show me your work. I'm not done <laughs> roasting you, sir. Yeah. Okay. I am going to re-import. Let me just first skim through here to see if I can find anything that really strikes me. That sound is our poodle, who for some reason only scratches the rug while we're recording videos. I just threw her a pretzel to make it stop. Stop, That's poodle. That's good. So I feel like you just rewarded her for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> dog training 101. How to I'm train your dog to scratch your rug. <laughs> I'm going to throw me a pretzel to reward me for rewarding her. <laughs> okay. We're yeah. looking at your reflections photos, and I'm importing the photos that have come in during our live show. So these people are actually watching. Uh -huh. about this lady with a very cool dress. Oh, they put her in front of a table. I thought they submerged the child. <laughs> you get a pick. That's a beautiful shot. Um, yeah, that's actually a really smart thing to do. You know, you could have just taken a straight on picture of her, but I think you looked around, you looked for something to put into the foreground and that's what took the mm -hmm. picture to the next level. I love the black and white processing here. Fantastic. One of the best shots we've seen tonight. Really good stuff, guys. I like these shots. People got a, ooh, people got a little creative. Oh, Chelsea's really into horses lately. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. I like the interesting processing. Good shot, Craig. Um. Mm. Oh. Well. <laughs> Not touching. I like the reflections and everything in the processing, but it looks like a Starbucks ad. And she's looking at her phone. So I wish maybe she was doing something a little more <clears throat> romantic. Because looking at your phone is kind of a negative thing. Like, it's annoying to people. Maybe if she was reading a book or even just gazing out the window, it would be more photogenic. This feels very disengaged because we're not a part of what she's looking at. So We also have a reflection of somebody else looking at their phone in the lower oh, left yeah. corner. <laughs> and it's a statement in the modern world. Oh I love gosh. her styling, though. And the fact that even her phone is styled... I, I like that shot despite her phone. Okay. Look at the still life. Mm hmm. You got into this the still life world here. We have eggs with birthday candles. What's the story? Um, skulls and spices and. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm sure that it all has meaning to the photographer and i really like that about it it's a little off level i would fix that but this is actually the beautiful pencils. i'm going to give it a pick maybe there's like a witch doctory type vibe because um they have the beads like the mardi gras beads and some skulls and things cool kirk i like that you tried something different yeah the eggs and the candles man that's blowing my mind a little bit Look at this guy. That's interesting. I like what you did, DeWitt. This is a case where I... Rotated shot. Mm -hmm. We've been doing that today. Oh, maybe. Um, I do think I would want to see this one symmetrical, though. Don't you think? Like, I'm just going to line like their legs up there. There we go. It was almost there. I like pretzels. Let's see what else we got. Um, you know, I've been more free with aspect ratio lately. I used to have this sort of rule where I would crop, but I would always maintain the original aspect ratio. And maybe it's because Instagram like forces you to crop, especially the vertical shots. I've just been like, let's just go to a different aspect ratio, but I've especially like the eight by 10 aspect ratio lately. I think it works better here because we had so much just free space on the bottom. It's weird that people adhere to aspect ratio so much still, even though with a digital format, you don't really, you could do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. This shot is really interesting. Like it really caught my eye. It, it is unusual. Yeah. It's a little upsetting. I think I'd lean into that. Yeah. I, I like it. I'm going to give it a pick. I, I don't know. It really made me think. What did it make you think about? 
what is going on with a shot? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> I want to find one that makes me think. A challenge. <laughs> Self roast. Take that. Um, what about 112? It's like a macro shot. And it's gorgeous, right? Wow. It's a setup shot, but it's very carefully staged. Uh, I'm going to give it a pick. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I think because I know how these are done, I see how it's made. A little bit of the magic is gone. Mm. But you did a good job at that thing. It yeah. doesn't detract from me. Like, I know it's actually a whole lot of work. And so I think, okay, I appreciate that they put that much effort in. The reflection there was a little burnt out. So be sure to check the exposure. It's better to bring up the shadows than have the highlights overexposed. Ooh. Enrique. This one's cool. Very different. I love that. Yeah, I like that too. It was really compelling. What else? Hey, Chris, do you have any more questions or comments? Yes, indeed, we do. How about uh, for landscape photography, what's a good idea for photos on heavy, cloudy days? Other than having a fog plan, which we know. Um, it's tough. And, you know, if you live in the UK or Seattle, you face a lot of days like that. Uh, one suggestion is to be sure that you don't overexpose the sky and then play with the highlights, like use a graduated filter on the sky and maybe uh, r like crush the blacks a little bit to increase the contrast in the sky so you see more detail in the clouds. Because overcast skies actually have a lot of interesting detail if you just yeah. increase the contrast enough that you can see the shape of all the clouds. You tend to see that with your eye, but your camera can lose it really careful, really easily. Um, and other, other than that, you might just focus on terrestrial shots, you know, shots that don't include a lot of the sky. Try to shoot down instead of up. Do you have any suggestions for that, Chris? Like, what are your tips? Well, uh, in August, I was at a, an air show, and as we were driving up to it, I, I, was, <laughs> I was bummed because it was just nasty, cloudy, and then it started to break up, and it got... We got some of the best sky pictures by, I, I was doing exactly what you said. I was exposing for the clouds because I know I could bring up the shadows a lot easier. Yeah. And we got some absolutely dramatic sky and cloud photos by just paying attention and not blowing them out. Cool. Good tip. For sure. You like this one of the lizard? Yeah. I just turned it upside down so that the actual lizard would be more centered in the picture instead of the reflection one mm -hmm. just to balance it a little bit cool shot Giovanni. this is cool i like this shot it's kind of a classic shot yeah it's another shot where i might bring it into an eight by ten aspect ratio because we got a you know his glasses are like mid-line and i'd like to see him more upper third yeah i'm just exposing for his face a tiny bit more just because the picture was a little bit dark. That's all. Okay. This is sort of a classic shot <laughs> of the mirror there. Is that baby driving? <laughs> I don't think that's a great... Is that baby driving and taking a selfie? Yeah. That's a cool baby. Yeah, really cute. I was going to say it would be a little bit cooler if you were driving and like the background were panning, but... Oh, don't do that. George. That's dangerous. Papa Miguel. Beautiful colors. I love the movement of the clouds, and they kind of point towards the house, which is really pretty. Let me look at. Let me, let me zoom and see what's happening here. Yeah. So if you like that effect, you can get that get it by using a super wide angle lens. You know, maybe like fourteen millimeter full frame, and then George has a long exposure there, so it's long enough that he's probably using an ND filter. Uh, because the clouds are moving that much. And I don't know what the shutter speed is, unfortunately, but you can see it's probably at least a few seconds, depending on how fast the clouds are moving. But it is a cool and kind of surreal effect. Yeah, it's really beautiful. I'm giving you a pick. I just beautiful brightened colors. it up a little tiny bit just to 
make the colors a little more crisp. I'm just skimming through to see if there's any last pictures we want to look at before we get out of here. Mummy. Ooh. Okay. okay. So cool, but we gotta, gotta get rid of that up. building on the left, yes. right? Yes. I think I know they don't want to ruin the the arc of the aurora, but we have to do it. It has to be done, Simon. But it's still, it's bringing all this like haze into it. Mm -hmm. That you must have been so mad that that super bright thing was there when you have this surreal dark scene. Can we cheat? Yeah, that's what I would do. Let's see. Let's see what happens. I do think a we... radial filter is probably the right choice. You're definitely, yeah. Okay. Let's kind of dehaze it a little. Let's see. Okay. And then we'll blend it. Okay, so play with that some. I I don't know how you feel about editing, Simon, but... But we just if did. If you were to... We just did. And <laughs> it, I think it would be even better if you were to take out the buildings along the water there. It totally depends on your philosophy and what you intend for this shot. But if you're feeling like you might wouldn't mind some post-processing, I think there's a lot more potential by eliminating all the sort of non-human distractions and simplifying the composition. I I think it's okay with night photos to brighten things up a little bit too. Maybe I'd bring down the aurora a little more. Yeah, I don't think that's cheating by anybody's standards. I think I went too far, Simon, to be honest with you. I, I'm going to give it a pick. It's a beautiful shot. You got to wherever that is, you're probably very cold. Yeah, I want to go there. I want to see these suckers. Okay. Wait, where's the reflection? Ah, I see. I see, I see. You want to call it a day? I feel like we saw a lot of great reflections today. Yeah. I want to end it on a high note. We'll call it a day. Guys, next week our theme is autumn. Got a fall feeling going on. You know what I mean? We, let's make the best of this. Um, and also, we took a look at a really incredible website today. And if you want to try one of your own, go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. And you can get a free 14-day trial. You don't need to put in your credit card or anything. Just try it out and see if you like it. And if you do, you can get 10% off with the coupon code Chelsea. Thanks, Squarespace. And we'll see you all next week. Bye. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. That is all. <laughs>